Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time so wonderful before your presence, Lord. Thank you because you are good and your mercy is everlasting. Amen and amen. Give a strong applause to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's good to praise the Lord. Greet the person that is next to you. Say, brother, sister, God bless you. Welcome. I'm happy to see you. Amen. Glory to God. Be all of you welcome, my brethren. You may be seated. I don't know if there is anybody that is visiting us for the first time. Are you visiting us for the first time? Raise your hand, please. No? You have been here before? Very well. Glory to God. How good. Are you happy? Are you happy? Are we going to be happy after this wonderful time of being able to worship our God? Of course. Very well, brethren. This week, we have had the child come, and believe me, it has been something precious. Uh, some kids have been told if they want to come in front, please. I'm going to ask Damaris also if she can come in front. We are not going to go make all of them come in front because there's going to be many, but a few have been uh, named. Very well. Them and part of more children were in the camp. I have asked them if they could share or tell us something about this experience that they had in the camp. Was it good? What has it been for you? What like you mo you like most? That I had a lot of fun and I laughed a lot. How did the teachers were? Well, yeah, sure. And you, what did you think about the camp? It was very fun and I had a great time. What did you like the most? To be with my friends and spend uh, good times in the swimming pool and in the excursions that we did. What was the name of the theme? Did you listen? Well, flight M16. 15, it makes Mark 16, 15. Preach the gospel. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. That was the theme of the camp. Let's give a strong applause to the Lord. Amen. Very well. Firstly, I wanted to thank God for allowing us to have this camp and for the kids. Yesterday, they were so happy and at the same time sad that they were crying because it was the end of the camp. So I give thanks to God for this, because truly God has used us. They have, uh, we haven't had any problem because God took the control of every detail. So many thanks also to the church for praying and to all the brethren that went up to help us in the kitchen, to clean, to all of you many thanks, because truly without you, we, it would be impossible to do it. Also, thanks and to remind you that we still have more camps. Next week, we're going to have the youth camp, the teenager camp from 26 till 30 of July, from 13 till 17 years old. There are still places. So if you know someone or you have a nephew, a friend or a person that wants to come, there are still places. So I encourage you for you to go. Also, we will have the youth camp that is going to be in Toledo is uh, from the 11th to 16th of July, of August. Uh, and there are still places and the youth camp, the other one that is gonna be here also the third week of August and encourage all the youth that they can go, for them to go and there are still places that we don't want anybody to be left out. So you can write your name as soon as possible. Having to account, please, I still 
places. Remember that the child camp was filled very soon and many child could not go because uh, of lack of space. Uh, for us, it was a great pain uh, to say to them that they could not come because it was full. 50 kids were able to come. Uh, a big group came, came from Fort Aventura that they behaved really, really well. So we are very happy of the precious work that the Lord is doing. And as Damaris said, thanks to each one of the ones that helped, especially also to the church that has been praying, because all of this is the fruit of the prayers, of the support of God. Amen. And I believe that all the kids have come return complete, complete all of them. Thanks to God for this beautiful time that we had. Very well, I think there is not any more announcements. The pastor had a, a very, very blessed meeting today with the brethren in Alicante, a precious time for the glory of the Lord. So let's keep praying for the Lord to bless his life and Elena also that is with him. I believe the children, they can go to their Sunday school where they also are going to be receiving their word and their teaching in this hour. And we prepare for what the Lord wants to speak to our hearts. Close your eyes, wherever you are, and as always, ask the Lord for him to speak to your life, to your heart in this hour. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for this time that we have had in praise and worship before you, my God. Now, Lord, in this moment, we present our lives for you to speak to us. Give us wisdom to be able to understand and comprehend your word. That word that is alive that today you're going to bring to our hearts that we may put in practice every day of our lives. We want, Lord, to be a reflection and show that we are your children wherever we are. Bless my brethren that are here present and all the ones that are going to be listening to this message through the internet. Thank you for this time so beautiful. We present it before you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Very well, brethren. I don't know how many of you maybe have made this question to yourself. Lord, what do you want me to do? Have you ever made this question to yourself? Because there is something that we have very clear, I hope, that all the ones that we are here today before the Lord, we are safe. Amen? We have this very clear. But the question is the following. If I'm safe, through my Lord Jesus Christ, why am I not in the presence of the Lord already? Why am I still here? Why am I not with Him? Won't it be that the Lord is maintaining us alive for a purpose to be fulfilled in our lives? Haven't you asked this yourself? Lord, what is it that you want to do with me? What for? Why? Why am I in this place? Why in this work? Why am in this country? Why do I live in this neighborhood? Why do I go to this place? Why, Lord? What am I in this church for? What do you want me to do in this church? I don't go to church to listen to a word and then live and do my life as I want. It's not like this. The word won't tell us that uh, the Lord wants us uh, for this to be in our life. All depend on us. Are you uh, willing to do those deeds to serve the Lord regardless of what he asks from us? Say, Lord, I'm going to do it because one of the things that we see at the light of the scriptures and I want that today we start with this text is in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. And pay attention to what it says. Ephesians 2 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. See why we have been created in Christ Jesus, for good works. You see the role that we have? We are new creature, yes or not, in the Lord. We are new creature. Now the things are different. The things start to be new with a purpose. What for? For good works. See? that this is so beautiful that it says, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Those works the Lord has prepared beforehand for you and for me, for us to walk in them. The question is, 
are we uh, walking in those uh, works that the Lord prepared for us? Because he has called us with a purpose. And what are those works? Because I believe that there are persons that they think that they are doing what is correct. They think they are doing good works. They think they are doing something good before the Lord. But mm, you may think it's good, but it may not be good. You believe, sometimes we say, oh, this is good. What I'm going to do, the decision I'm going to make, I believe is good. Well, that's your opinion. But I believe that we don't have to base ourselves in uh, opinions nor feelings, but only and exclusively in what the Word of God says. And let me tell you that a person, because she thought or believed that something was good, today still we are paying those consequences. And we see it in Genesis 3, verse 6. It says, when the woman saw that the tree was good, she saw that the tree was good. She thought it was something that was good. That is, was her opinion and her thought. She saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes. All of this came out of where? Of her feelings. But all these feelings that she was feeling at this moment, it was a feeling that was not according to the will of God. The Lord had told her not to do certain things, but she thought, believed, thought that it was good. I believe that many times we fall down and we do so many mistakes because we have that behavior and say, I think it's good to do this. I think that this is good to do, but we don't have to move like this. How many persons I have listened to them saying, oh yes, this boy is good. This girl is good for me. Maybe it's the person that the Lord has put in my way. The question is the next one. What does the Bible say about this? Do not join with someone that is does not believe, believe the same as you do. It's not about what you think. You're thinking that is good or bad. It's about what the Word of God says and depends on what the Word says. I will make my decisions according to what? To the Word. And this woman thought it was good. And what happened? She tried that. And afterwards, she gave to Adam. And because of that disobedience, the sin entered into the world because she thought it was good. And how many persons think that is good? Certain things, they make decisions, and this uh, evilness goes into their house and breaks families and destroys households because I thought that maybe that job, it was good. I thought that this decision that I made, it was good. And then... How do we have to make decisions and do that work that the Lord called us and we were created in Jesus Christ? Well, through the word, I repeat it to you again. It's not found, founded in what we may think, not in feelings. The feelings may uh, are deceiving. The heart is evil. We should not be guided by emotions. That's what the, the worst thing that we could do to be guided by emotions or feelings. But we have to have clear, have to do is have clear what the word of God says. And how many persons in Proverbs, there is a text that said that there are persons that think, they believe that what they are doing, the way that they have taken, they think is good. But it says that the end of that way is way of death. But they thought that it was good. They didn't examine at the light of the scriptures if that way was really good or not. This is why there is a text that says, Lamp is to my feet that enlights my way. What? Your word. Your word is the one that gives me light, that guides me, that shows me, that speaks to me, that teach me. The word of God is the one that is going to take us and show us and teach us how to make good decisions. And we're going to see it now what I'm saying to you in the word, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is inspired by God. And profitable for what? For teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. See what it says. After it says that the word is so useful 
to for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God listen to this very well. This is the purpose. The man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. It means that what is that prepares the word? The word of God is the one that truly is going to teach me, is going to reprove me, is going to uh, correct me, is going to make for me to be a true son or daughter of God. And after I let, I let myself be treated through the word, then I'm going to be prepared for good works. This does not mean that I'm going to arrive and say, I'm going to do and do and do. Have you seen this attitude? There are people that, some persons that have an encounter with the Lord and they want to eat uh, the world. That feeling is precious. To know that the Lord has forgiven my sins, that the Lord has made me a new creature, the Lord has healed my heart, my feelings, my emotions, that ha has done great things inside of me. I think that I'm speaking in this moment, we all have lived this experience. I believe that there are no words to express this. And many want to do so many things. And let's do this, and let's do the other, I want to do this. And they go so fast that because they want to do everything, uh, at the end, the world uh, eats them because this is not about going uh, running. This is about letting yourself be treated by the Lord. Go little by little. And how do we advance little by little? At the light of the world, when we go close to the scriptures, when we examine, when we scrutinize, when we seek, as the word says, never depart this book from you, but you will meditate in it day and night, and if you do everything according to what it's said in it, everything will be good for you. But everything founded in the Word of God, in what the Scripture says, that's the foundation. Are we living according to what the Word of God says? Are we putting in practice those deeds that we know that we have to put it in practice? Are you putting it in practice? What are we doing for the Lord? If I ask you this week, what happened this week? What did you do for God? You don't have to answer me. The question is, what have you done for God? And what did you take effort for the Lord this week? What deeds have you done for the Lord? Because we have been created, and I started with this text. Don't forget it. We have been created in Christ Jesus for good works, that they are prepared beforehand for what? For us to walk in them. Hebrews 13, see what it says, Hebrews 13, let's read Hebrews 13, verse 15 and 16. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of what? Of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. This is what has to come out of our lips, praise, adoration to our God, and do not neglect doing good and sharing, for which such sacrifices God is pleased. What uh, please God to help each other, to do good, what is good, one with the other. That is something that please God. Are we doing good one to the other? Are we truly paying attention to the needs of the others? In these activities of the camps, maybe have you come close and say, excuse me, anything that you need that it can help, count with me. Because sometimes we think that the help is there. And why I'm gonna come to church? Why I'm gonna paint? For sure there are gonna be many brothers and everybody think like that, and at the end you are alone because everybody think the same, for sure go many. Where I'm gonna go to clean the church? For sure there is many people cleaning the church and maybe it's just one person, the one that is cleaning the whole church because all of them think the same. The Lord has created us for good works. To be always paying attention to those opportunities. Did you know that there are opportunities that God is giving to us to serve him? If somebody gave us example of good works and us of service, that was our Lord Jesus Christ in everything. He was always working. Even a moment comes when his disciples bring him food and say, the teacher has to be very hungry because you have not eaten. And they say, Lord, there is food here. And he didn't want to eat. And he said, my food is to do the will of my father. That is my food. 
He didn't lose his time, and the scripture is telling us that the days and the times are bad, and that we have to do the most of them, to do the most with the time, because the days are bad, the times that we are living are difficult. And the question is, are we truly making the most of the time, or is our life is going through our hands and we are not uh, doing anything with it. I think the most beautiful and wonderful is to be able to say, Lord, I am so tired, but because I'm serving you. But you know what is sad? To be tired serving the world. To be in pain, to have pr physical problems. Why? Because you have given your life only and exclusively to the things of the outside and not the things of the Lord. Did you realize how Damaris had her voice? She couldn't hardly speak. But not only her, but all the ones that were working in the camp, I, they didn't have uh, voices. They were leaving their voices, but you know something? They did it for the glory of God. And if something happened, if somebody may say, I'm tired, I have worked so hard for your kingdom to serve you, to serve others, believe me, that that is the most beautiful way of being tired because you are going to go to bed uh, uh, sleeping, with uh, happiness and joy because you have been what been doing what is good before God. There are persons that are working the whole day and they working and working and they go to bed with anxiety because they have not seek God and they cannot even sleep. This is why you have to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? I don't want to lose my life. I don't want my life to go through doing things that you have not called me to do. Have you asked him, Lord, have you called me to do this? Have you called me to work in this? Have you called me, Lord, to take effort in this that I'm doing in this project? Have you called me for this? Because if it, it is not if it is not like that, will you will will you be able to give up all of that to serve the Lord? I'm gonna ask you the question again. Do not answer me. Are you willing to give up anything to do the will of God? Because the Lord said that ones that want to follow me deny himself. Take his cross and follow me. And believe me, but the most beautiful is to know that we are doing something for the Lord. To know that we are doing the will of God is the most beautiful that we may have and feel in our heart. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. See what is good. Who desires all men to be safe and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is in a context, brethren. I was sharing this text on Thursday. On Thursday, I was speaking. I was saying that the Lord encourages and teaches for us to be doing prayers before him for all men. Because this is good unacceptable before the Lord. We are he, see, Here we are seeing something that we all can do. What else can I do? I want to do things for do. Pray something good before the Lord. To pray, also to read his word is something uh, acceptable for the Lord. What it cannot be is for us that we have accepted Jesus for our, as our Savior and our life remains the same as before we knew him. This cannot be like this, because believe me, I ha I don't know anyone that I have had an encounter, a truly encounter with Christ, and remain having his life or her life the same. It's impossible. If somebody here says, I had an encounter with the Lord, and I remain being the same person, you are wrong. You have not had an encounter with Jesus. This is why the scripture says that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old things passed away. Everything is made new. And one of the things that you start to feel is that you start to hate certain things that before you liked, and now you don't like them because it's sin. They don't please you anymore. They don't attract you anymore, those things. And we start to leave things because that's sin before the eyes of God. But the life of a believer is not only based in giving up, but also it's based in doing, doing certain things that the world asks. And what are those things? to read the Bible, to study the Word of God, to know the will of God that is good, acceptable, and perfect. That is the most beautiful thing that we may know, the will of God, the things that please the Lord to pray, as the Scripture says, that we have to pray for all because that is pleasant for the Lord, that is good before the Lord because He wants that everybody repent, all men repent and be saved. 
That's what the Word of God says. Then, at the light of the Scriptures, when we are scrutinizing and reading, we are knowing what the Lord wants me to do, each one of those things. See what it says in James. We read it today. James chapter 2, verse 14 till 15. What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works? When he says he has faith, is this person that says, I believe in the Lord. I believe in the Lord, you know? I, not simply the ones that are here believe in the Lord. Many people out there also, uh, they live their life other way. They, you ask them, do you believe in God? And they will say, yes, I believe in God. They also boast in having faith. This is why uh, James is teaching about this. He's saying, what use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works? If you have faith, then something has to show that uh, you have faith. And then it says, your works. Can that faith save him? Can that save faith save him? Let's go to other texts, because I know that there are persons that are, are going to say, but uh, why does it say that the faith sa can save? If it is another text that says that salvation comes through faith, let's make this clear because I don't want any doubt. And let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved. Through what? Through faith. See, Anderson, that's the text that I was going to mention to you, that by faith we are saved. Yes, of course, let's keep reading. And that not of yourself. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Well, this goes against James. James says that it's by works, uh, and this he says that it's by faith and not works. Let's read. It's always good to read completely, and then it fi we find, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Now it says that we are created for good works. Do you realize, goes by hand by hand, a person that believes in the Lord, his faith is showed through works, and a person that has works show the faith through the works. It's impossible for a person to say that he's a Christian and his works do not show that, because sometimes, because then he's a liar. And let's move on in James. So we may understand the text that James explained, and I, I say it again, verse uh, 14, the Bible does not have contradiction. It goes hand by hand. What use is it, my brethren, if someone said he has faith, but he has no works, can that faith save him? Why does James that this question? Can you be uh, safe saying, I believe? Can you be safe saying, I believe in God? I believe in Christ. But you keep practicing sin, and you keep doing sin, and you simply, your lips confess something that you don't live. The Bible says that the one that practices sin will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is not only from lips towards the outside. Verse 15. If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace. Be warm and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body. What use is that? What use does it have to say all of that? Go in peace. Oh, brother, God bless you. This makes it so beautiful. It makes you look so spiritual. We having the opportunity of being able to help that brother or sister that is going through a difficult time and say, brother, God bless you. Go in peace. No, no, if we can, and if we can do it to be able to bless and help that person, let's do it and let's show that we are different, that we have faith, that we have believed in the Lord. Through what? Through those words. This is why the Lord is saying, love each other. Man, not simply with words, but with your doings that, all, that are seen, the effort, 
that those deeds are seen, that we are different, that I am a person that is transformed by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, and people have to realize that the family, when they see you, those attitudes, they may say, oh, have to change. <coughs> Before, you thought only on yourself and having and having and having, and you didn't want to help anyone. But now that you have no Jesus, since you start going to church, how have you changed? Yes, of course, because the deeds are going to speak about who we are, not the words. Not so many verses, brethren. No, 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 it's not a matter of learning verses, but putting them in practice through works. And James is teaching about this behavior. Teaching is teaching. James is teaching that we have to act in the midst of the need. Verse 17, even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. If it's not accompanied, the faith by works is dead. You can boast, you can say, but let me tell you that you have a faith that is dead. But someone may well say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works and I will show you my faith by my works. Can you, do you think that you can learn from someone that have faith through their works? Yes, but we cannot see the faith in someone when they only say it from their lips and don't do anything, when they don't do anything. This is why it's necessary for us to do works in our lives. But now the works are not because of obligation. It's not because the world now is saying this. The work has to come out because of love. Not, you are not even going to realize of your effort to serve the Lord. Simply you do it because you love the Lord. There are persons that say, oh, why are you reading the Bible so much? I don't, they don't understand why you read the Bible so much. Why do you go to church? Why always are you uh, going, you lose uh, in a camp, you arrive tired, you lose your voice? Why do you do all of this? Do they, do they pay you? No, brother. We don't pay for this. Do you know why we do all of this? Because we love the Lord. And everything we do, we do it for love. Every action, every feeling, every effort, everything we do, it, we do it as if it, it was for the Lord, for love. Because a person that is in love, how many of you are in love? Very few. I thought that all were going to raise your hands. I saw some couples that one raised their hand and the other not. Be careful. <laughs> when you are in love, you do whatever is necessary, whatever is necessary. You are not tired. You go where your partner is and where are you coming from? Oh, just from here. But you have walked 25 streets to see her because you love and you want to get to that destiny. When you love somebody, you do whatever. You are not tired. It's, it's, you give whatever because you love. When we love the Lord, all the things that we do, we do it for love. And people is not going to understand that if they don't love God. But the ones that love the Lord, we know that all these deeds, the Lord put it in our hearts to do it with joy and with happiness. And not complaining. If there is someone that is going to do something complaining, don't do it. If you are going to do it for the Lord, don't do it. Uh, if you are complaining. But when you take the opportunity, when you see a need, when you have that opportunity of being able to serve and do something for the Lord, that is good. Uh, raise your hand first in case you cannot take the opportunity. But we have opportunities constantly. We always have opportunities to do good before the Lord in, at, at all moments. Verse 19, you believe that God is one, you do well. The demons also believe and shudder. Why is this text here? Because James is saying, look, brethren, you know something? Not simply believing, because also the demons believe and shudder. But there are many that they believe that do not obey God and nor even uh, fear God. The demons shudder in the presence of the Lord. This is why James is teaching and saying the faith has to be accompanied by works, because a faith that do not have works is dead. And there is where it shows truly the works. In, in that moment that the Lord gives us opportunities, when the trials come, are opportunities for the works to be manifested. 
an opportunity to read the Bible, to trust, to be firm in the Lord, an opportunity to gather? Do you believe that it's good to gather in the church? And why many do not gather? If we know that the Bible tells me, do not stop gathering, the question is, why do I stop gathering if it's good for me? And I have been created for good works, and this is a good work. And many of the works, and many times we don't put it in practice, the ones that we lose is ourselves, because we didn't do it. And the Lord wants to bless our lives, and it's us that many times, oh, I'm tired, I don't feel like it. Oh, today you don't know what he had. The Lord is not calling you or asking you if you are tired or discouraged. The Lord wants to bless our lives through obedience. Let's be obedient and we'll see the hand of God on our life and let's take effort of doing what is our uh, duty to do. And persons want to do what the Lord has not called them to do. They live with anxiety, wanting to do things. Maybe the Lord has not called you to do that, but then what you can do, you don't do it. And sometimes we are like that. We want to do what we are not called to do, and we don't do what we have to do. Oh, Lord, I want to do this. I don't have this. Well, don't do it. But then there are things that we can do, and the question is, why aren't we doing them? If it is in our, if we can do it. Do you think it's good to preach the word? Do you think that the Lord has given us opportunity in our lives to be able to speak to someone, to be able to able to preach to someone? Many times, many times the Lord has given us opportunities to be able to do good, to preach someone. And many times, you know what? We haven't done that. Why? We? Because we were ashamed. Because, oh, what will they say? Or because I'm tired. Why is speaking now? The Lord puts the feeling and also the doing. And if the Lord has put the feeling in our heart of doing certain things, let's take effort to put it in practice. But the Lord wants us to do things for the Lord. The Lord, do you see in the scriptures the Lord being lazy or doing nothing? When you study the scriptures, have you seen the Lord sitting, waiting for all to come to him? I don't see the Lord like that. I see that the Lord did not stop walking and was in a place, then went to the other, then went to the other place. When the night fell down, he went to the mountain. Instead of sleeping, he went to pray. And when the night went by, when he returned with, with his disciples, the multitude was waiting for him. And he didn't stop doing miracles nor signs. He didn't stop doing so many things in the life of so many persons, even teach them. I see that the Lord never stopped. And the Lord wants us for us to imitate him, to imitate his life. And I believe that a person that lives being lazy is not a person that imitates God. The, the most vulnerable uh, place to be tempted is to be lazy. You want to open a door to Satan? Be lazy. It's the greatest door that you can open to the enemy. Start to uh, throw things and start to tempt us. But when we are active, when we are believers, that we read the scriptures, that we pray, that we do the most with the time, that we preach, that we are always active in the things of the Lord, we don't have time not even to sin. We don't have time to be tempted. Why? Because we are always doing something for the glory of the Lord. And we have to be active always in the Lord. And if not, we are going to see it in Peter. When the Lord presents to Peter again, and Peter, when Peter denies the teacher, and when the Lord goes to Peter, what does he ask him? Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. And what does the Lord say? Take care of my lambs. What is the meaning of this? Start working, Peter. If what you are saying to me, that you love me, is true, reflect it through the works. There is where you show if you truly love me. And again, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Then take care of my sheep. But do something. And he's saying constantly and again, Peter, do you love me? And Peter was sad and say, said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And the Lord repeats again the same. Why? Because the Lord wants that true love is represented in doing, working for the kingdom of God, taking effort to do the will of God, growing in the work always. I ask you, are you growing? Because maybe you have been 10 years with the same text of the Bible that you know, always in the same chair and doing always the same things. 
We have not been called to that as children of God. The Bible teaches me that I have to grow always in the work of the Lord. I have to be growing in the things of the Lord and to have responsibilities. Why? Because the Lord has shared different functions to each one of us and different gifts and ministry to each one of us. And each one we form the body of Christ and a body. Each member has different roles in the body. Yes or not? And the question that I want to make to you is what is your role in the body of Christ? What is that you are doing? Because if a part of the body is not working, then it starts to lack the whole body. Do you believe that a body will advance properly if feet were not there? It would be hard for the body to advance. If it was lacking a part of the member, it would be hard for the body. And we are a body that is perfect in Christ. And the head is our Lord. And we have a role for God. This is why I'm asking you, the question is, what do you want me to do, Lord? Peter understood automatically that to represent the Lord towards the Lord was based on the things that he did for the Lord. And to love God, to love the Lord, what, you know what took, uh, what led Peter uh, to be crucified? And there he showed that truly loved the Lord, a love, a love that is willing to give his life for Christ. Are we you willing to give your life for Christ? Oh, Anderson, don't go so far. The Bible tells us that we have to reach that point. The Apostle Paul said, For me, living is Christ, as unto that is willing for me. And this same one that said these words, when he uh, started to persecute the church before having an encounter with the Lord, he thought he was doing good, but it was not something good before the Lord. He had a, faith, a genuine faith, but not in the things of God. Till the Lord got to his, went to him, and when he had that encounter, what, what did Paul say? Who are you? I'm Jesus, the one that you are uh, persecuting. And when the Lord confronts him, he makes another question, and he did. What do you want me to do? Is the question that I have made to you. Have you asked the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? That was the second question that the Apostle Paul said to the Lord. Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said, go this place and you will be told what you have to do. I want to make you a question. Who tells you what you have to do? Yourself? <laughs> I saw the husband doing like that to the wife. Yourself? Your friend? A person tells you what you have to do? Or is the Lord the one that is directing our lives? Is my Lord the one that is telling me what I have to do? Because if it is like this, we are in the correct way. We have to be prepared for all good work, brethren, at every moment and wherever we are. Because there is a text that teaches us, and this text is very hard. The text is in James chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. This is harsh because we can say, Lord, I have stopped smoking, I have stopped drinking, I have stopped devices, I have stopped certain things, Lord, because I know that what I was doing was not pleasant before you and that was sin and I have stopped doing many things. Glory to God. This is what we have to do. There is not even merit in that because it's what we have to do. Now the question is, are we doing the good? Because if we are not doing what is good, also is sin. Also that is sin. If you know that you have to help your neighbor and you are not helping, that's sin. If you have, if you know you have to love your brother and you are not loving, it's sin. If you know you have to read the scriptures and you don't do it, it's sin. If you know you have to gather and you are not doing it, it's sin. If you know that we have to have fellowship with the Lord and you don't do it, it's sin. I could give you a huge list of many things that the word of God says that we have to do. There are things that we stop doing, but also there are things that we have to start doing. And you know why? For the glory of God. Because we love Him. And this text is in a context. You know, in a tremendous context where people say, tomorrow we will go, we will war, we will have this, and we will do. And the Lord teaches them and say, what are you saying? If God wants, you will do and you will have. And you will be able to do many things. 
And afterwards, sudden we find these things that says, to who, who knows the right thing to do and does not do it to him, it is sin. Why? Because we give more importance to what we want to do than what to the Lord want us to do. Lord, this month we are going to go on holidays. How many have their holidays ready? None of you? The question is, Lord, do you want me? Lord, if you want, I will go on holidays. If Lord, if you want, I will travel. Lord, if you want, we will move. If you want, this will be organized, but only if you want, because if it is not like this, it's not going to uh, be okay. That's the attitude that we have to have at every moment. Lord, what do you want me to do? Imagine, you know what you have to do when you are 90 years old and you believe in 17, and at 90 you said, oh, I knew you called me, and I was so distracted in other things that my life went by. And I didn't to make the most of the time. Made the most of the time. You know? Your life and my life is like a fog. That now you're there and when you see you're not there anymore. And many say, oh, I remember when I was 15 years old and that was 15 years ago. And your life goes by so quick. Let's learn to value and do things as they have to be done. Psalm 119 and 34. Give me understanding that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Give me understanding to comprehend, to understand your will, your word, and I will do it with all my heart. I will do it with joy, with happiness, without complaining in anything of what I have to do, but in the contrary. When we go to Revelations chapter 2, 3, when the Lord is speaking to the seven church, one of the things that the Lord confronts them is, well, I know your works, I know your deeds. Do you know that the Lord knows your deeds and my deeds? Of course. Do you think that they are noticed? Those things that we do and you say, oh, nobody's watching me here in the room. Nobody's seeing me. And before God, you think this and notice that work that you are doing? No. We cannot do anything without the Lord knowing and realizing. Because here the Lord is putting up to light the works of those seven churches. I know your works. I know your works, he says, and the Lord knows each one of your works and my works also. He knows them. Matthew 17, 27. See what Matthew says. 17, 16, 7, 27. For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels and will, te will then repay every man according to his deeds. It means that there will be a reward, a reward for the deeds. The scriptures and the word of the Lord says that when we are in his presence, several books are going to be open, the book of life, and there is a book that is the book of the deeds, where it's going to be open, the Lord is going to open it, and the Lord is going to say, since I am, uh, being young, you're starting going to church. But here the deeds, mm, well, you have taken a fourth, you have maintaining holiness and you have been sick, what is good? And there is going to be a reward for you. And many simply will be saved by mercy. But others will receive a reward because they have been martyrs, because they have paid a price, because they have given their life because of Christ. They were not persons that were sitting, but they were active, persons that did not mind the criticism, did not mind to be abandoned, did not mind for people to lie about them or uh, have false testimony about them. They will have reward because they were not ashamed of Jesus Christ, and the Lord is faithful and righteous, and he's going to reward those persons. It was not, uh, they didn't say, I will go to church, that's it, I ask you forgiveness, I will give my life from Monday to Saturday, on Sunday I will ask you forgiveness again. Well, you will be saved, but there are going to be another persons that are going to take it forward, another persons that are going to pay the price, another persons that are not going to be simply with three biblical texts, but are going to scrutinize, seek, are going to go deeper in the word of God, and, the God, and God is going to give them wisdom from above and are going to understand the will of God for their life and want to do what God has called them for and they're going to do the most of the time, take the opportunities, 
take opportunity with their families, enjoy them, speak to their families, bend knees. They are going to praise the Lord in spirit and in truth as the Lord is seeking for them. Why? Because they have understood what they have to do as children of God. And they are not going to be distracted. But they are going to have their eye put in the things above, and they are not going to be distracted with the things in this world. Remember that the Lord has chose you and made you a new creature for you to go in good works that the Lord prepared for you beforehand. The question is, are you walking, walking in those good works? Stop the excuses. Stop excuses. There is a word that I like to tell to the youth all the time. You know which one it is because I'm repeating the whole time. The one that love makes time. The one that do not love makes excuses. What do you do when you have to serve the Lord? Do you take time to serve him or do you take excuse not to go? Stop excuses. I believe we are living in times in which we have to go seriously with the Lord. The Lord is coming back for his church. What are we doing? What are we losing our time? Let's make the most of the opportunities. The Bible teaches and says, do not be tired of doing well, of doing good. Never be tired of being a good person. Never be tired of doing the good, the works of God. Never be tired of doing good to others, regardless of how they pay to you or what they say to you or that they despise you. Do not get tired of doing good, because if we don't dismay, we will receive the reward from the Lord, because everything we do, we do it for the Lord. And the Lord is calling us in these times to do good deeds. And if we don't do it, if we know how to do good and we don't do it, it's sin. It's sin before the Lord. I hope that this word will encourage you for you to truly and say to the Lord, eh, Lord, what do you want me to do? As the Apostle Paul asked, Lord, what do you want me to do? Tell me and I will do whatever you want me to do. Close your eyes wherever you are. Say, Lord, I don't want to lose my time anymore. I'm tired of always be, always doing what I think or what I believe is good. I have made so many mistakes. I want to do your will. I want to do good works, Lord. I want to know, Lord, when I am in your, I, I, I want, when I am in your presence for you to tell me, serve and faithful in the little I gave to you and you have done what I asked you to do. How good to arrive to the presence of the Lord and the Lord tell us, I saw your effort, I saw your sacrifice, I saw the kilometers that you did to be able to gather with your brethren. I saw how you took time to read the word. I saw in your life that regardless of your work and that you had to attend your family, you always took time to pray and to have fellowship with me. I saw you, son, daughter. I saw each one of those each one of those efforts that you are doing. I saw how re, re, how they criticize you and they despise you. Even they raise false testimony against you, and you not at any moment you put your guard down. Not at any moment you got discouraged, but on the contrary, this strengthened you. Your faith got stronger. Your seeking after me increased, and every day you came closer to me. You saw the opportunity to serve me, and you took it at every moment. You were a good instrument in my hands. I could do those things and those doors that I opened to you because your heart was willing to do it. How beautiful to know that the Lord will tell us those words. How beautiful to know that the Lord will say, that's your, your reward. Because regardless of losing a loved one, regardless of losing your child or that person that was beside you, you trusted in me. Regardless that you lost that job in the midst of that sickness, your sight was all, always put in me. And that the Lord may say to us in the midst of all of that, I was beside you. You never stopped doing good deeds. You always served me with your hands, with your lips. You praised me. 
you always were willing to do what was good. Lord, help us. I know that many times we are, uh, we don't know how to think or the way we behave, that we don't do what is right and we harm another brothers and sisters with those attitudes. But we want to ask you forgiveness and help us to value and that opportunity that you give us to be able to serve you. Look the opportunity that they have each one of us that we preach. This is a work, Lord, that you have allowed that we can do. Allow for it to be done with excellency. Help us to, uh, to be in your word and do not leave your word. Look, each one of the persons that are in this platform to worship you, they never forget that they do it for you, that they have to come up with a good attitude because they do it for you. That is the opportunity that you have given to them to do good deeds and that your people can praise you and worship in spirit and in truth. See the ones that are up in the sound, in the letters, in the lights, they are doing that work also. They never for, may they never forget that they do it for you. And I have to do it with, uh, in the best way to the ones that are in the doors receiving the brethren to the ones that place the chairs, that clean the church, to each one of these persons, Lord, that help in one way or the other, Lord, bless their lives, that they never be tired nor discouraged, that they never stop doing what is good for you. Give us the opportunity this week, Lord, to be able to do good deeds for your glory, to be able to help, to bless, to preach, to be able to do something, Lord, for you, Lord. The times are being short, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Fill us with your presence, fill us with your spirit, fill us of your grace, of wisdom, of power, to be able to serve you according to your word, according to your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, because what makes us able for these good works is your word, as we have read. Your word teach us, rebuke us, and reprove us, so we will be prepared for good works words prepared us lord make us able lord to do those good works bless my brethren that are here present and prepare them also use them in a special way i ask you lord work in their lives in their families and thank you for everything you are doing and you're gonna keep doing in our lives to you all the glory and the honor in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen, amen. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Because this week, the Lord is going to give us the opportunity of doing good works. Do you believe it? 